Peter, what's your average day like? I think uh, the folks at home think that uh, the anchor people just come and sit down behind the desk, read the news, and go home, and it's not like that at all. Either. I hope they don't think that anymore. I think they <laughs> might have thought that years ago. I think the most exciting thing about this business is there isn't an average day. There are certain things that have to be accomplished every day, which means we've got to get the broadcast shaped, decide on what's important to put in, and decide what we can afford to leave out. Um, we spend a lot of time every day preparing for tomorrow and next week and next month in many cases. Um, part of the day I work as a reporter, part of the day I work as an editor, mostly as an editor now. Part of the day I work as a rewrite man in terms of preparing my own copy for the broadcast, and then part of the day I spend as a news reader. The half hour of the broadcast is on the air if we do it right the first time. <laughs> if we don't, we get to do it again for the other half of the country. And then you just start all over again. But it is never average, partly because the world is not there's no consistency in what's happening in the world every day. And we have to go with the ebb and flow of that. It is a, it's, a, it's an old cliche, I guess, or it's a cliche. It's a constant education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. That's the beauty of the business. I, that was my next question. Is, could you ever think of yourself doing something outside of television? Oh, I can think of myself doing something outside of television. Mm -hmm. I love radio, for example. Mm -hmm. My father was a great radio commentator. He always thought television was for the birds. Radio was much more serious, and it, and it has its own challenges, of course. But I think I would have a very difficult time doing something other than journalism at this point in my life. There are lots of other things I like to do. I think public service, not elected public service, but public service in general is very appealing to me. Um, but I'm not sure I'd be comfortable doing it full time. When you lay out the day's newscast, I would imagine you do the way we do as far as uh, you have a basic idea in the morning what your newscast is going to look like at, uh, at 6.30. You hope you do. You hope you do. You hope you do. <laughs> you know, I, I guess people don't realize it now. We go on the air 6.30 Eastern time in the evening. Um, so at least we in Springfield are in the same time zone. Mm -hmm. And we do sometimes on a big news day have a sense of what the broadcast is going to lead with. That is to say what's going to be the first story. And we have a, some sense of what the broadcast is going to look in the middle and maybe at the end. But on days when there is no clear lead, we're often struggling up until just before broadcast. On the day before we did this interview, we flipped the Lee's story in the broadcast six or seven minutes before we went on the air. That's always fun. Keeps the adrenaline flowing. I was, is that that? I, I know for me it is, and I would imagine it is for you at, at an even higher level here. The excitement of being able to do something like that, change at the last minute, and have no one know know the difference. Yeah, I, we're sometimes accused of being adrenaline freaks in this business, mm -hmm. and I think that the best work we do in this business is the. Is, is, is the work we've had a chance to think about, if not necessarily plan. But it is certainly true that, that, that journalism has what a lot of other crafts don't, which is that flying by the seat of your pants uh, part of the equation. And yes, that makes it, there's nothing more exciting for me than to sit down at this desk in the midst of a crisis and go for several, or in some cases, many hours as the story unfolds. The Gulf War is, mm -hmm. is, is among the most recent with a whole team of correspondents from producers out around the world. That is absolute um, from, a, uh, from a broadcast journalist's point of view. That's having the front page of the newspaper and sure. nobody's going to touch it but you. Now you touched on the Gulf War and I think back to 10 to 15 years ago there was a clear-cut difference between the local newscasts and the network newscasts. But satellite technology and ENG technology have changed all that. Do you think it's a change for the better? Well, I think it's a change, so I don't think it makes a difference whether I think it's for the better or not. I think we have to manage it. In some respects, I think there wasn't enough separation between network newscasts and local newscasts 10 or 15 years ago because I think on occasion we tried to encroach on your territory by doing small regional stories mm -hmm. that we shouldn't have bothered to do. We should have paid attention to the big national and international ones. I think what you're talking about, though, is that technology has given you what I call video flow. You point the dish up in the sky every day and you pull down from many parts of the world the same pictures that we pull down. I think where we differ and where we should continue to differ, and forgive me, I don't mean to, to, to be, um, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't mean to be uh, presumptuous here, but what we have at the network level that you don't have at the local level is the international experience. Right. You have the local experience we can't touch. And so I think it's great that local stations give their audiences perhaps a taste of the visuals in the world. But I think it's a mistake when local stations, in the main, I think it's a mistake, presume to cover the international news from some small community. My feeling as far as the Persian Gulf War was the local affiliates didn't belong there. 
you follow along those lines, I, I, I see this clear danger of someone from just a small town like Springfield going up, going over to the Persian Gulf and, and really getting in the way. And, and it's, it's oh, a no, dangerous I disagree situation. With that. Right? I, I disagree with that. I think it's fabulous for a local station to go on a big story because there's always a local angle. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were men and women from the Springfield area who went to the Gulf uh, to serve their nation. And we would not probably have got around to doing stories about them in such a way that they'd be so closely identified mm -hmm. with Springfield. I think it's probably not in, not the best use of your time. I want to be careful here so I don't insult anybody, but it's not, probably not in the best use of your time to try to tell the whole complicated story of the Gulf. But to do the local angle, I think, is terrific. We've uh, seen, and I think a lot's been written in recent years about the cutbacks at the networks, uh, how the network news division, ABC News now, as to what ABC News was 10 years ago, NBC and CVS. Uh, how have the cutbacks affected the way you do things now as opposed to 10 years ago? I don't Are think you? they have. I think yeah. we've been lucky at ABC News. We mm -hmm. haven't had the cutbacks that NBC and CVS have had. Um, in fact, we've expanded our programming. We have more news programming on the air than any other network because we have Nightline as well as World News Tonight in the morning program. We've now added World News Now, which is an overnight news service, which was just proving to be wonderfully successful and, uh, for people who watch in, at that time of the day here, and it's also going overseas to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So that has changed from that. More and more, I think we find that the, the networks seem to be relying on the local affiliates, uh, especially in the bigger cities, to cover those regional stories that you talked about. Is that, you see that as, as being a good thing? Well, we don't do it at ABC News. Mm -hmm. I know that some of the others do. NBC, I think, does it particularly. Mm -hmm. I think we, we're all, we'd be nuts if we didn't rely on the, in, on the intellectual news-gathering expertise of our local stations around the country because they know their, their, their community. You know Springfield a lot better than I'm ever going to know Springfield, sure. despite my visits to the Big E. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so we rely on them. What, I, what I'm not in favor of is having a local station cover for us all the time, mm -hmm. because it's like hiring somebody from another newspaper to go and cover the story for you. We know our own people. We trust our own people. We know how they work. We know what we want from them. And so you always like to have your own reporter on the scene rather than someone else's. How do you see the, the relationship between the affiliates and, and ABC News 10 years from now as we uh, continue to grow? Uh, things are changing every day. Well, I think because things are changing so fast, I can't think 10 years down the road in any other way than to realize that my children will be out of their teenage years, <laughs> <laughs> <Mine> <laughs> which too. is a great relief. <laughs> but I can look five years ahead. And I think that five years ahead, if we continue to really concentrate on not only doing just the big national and international stories, but trying to explain in greater detail than perhaps we have in the past what the big story of the day is, if it's health care, if it's the federal deficit, if it is the changing uh, threat in the former Soviet Union, if it's the, if it's the relationship between the U.S. and Japan. If we're explaining to people what that means in terms of their personal life and our national life, then I think we'll still have a healthy niche in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. If you continue to serve your communities rather than just do what a lot of people call body bag and rape, pillage, and murder in, in, your, in your towns and your communities, then I think you will continue to deserve the trust of your community. But I think that we always, I mean, it sounds awfully pompous, but I think we always have to be thinking about what it is we do that serve people best, not just do the promotional messages about it. You must be very proud of where ABC News has come over the last 30 years from a, a distant third to a number one and, and, the, and the network that people look to. Well, sometimes they look to us and I am very happy when they do. And I work clearly with, you know, with the best journalists in broadcast journalism. Um, and, and that makes me proud. But I must confess there's a kind of Calvinist streak in me and, and thank goodness and some others around here that when we're number one we think we have to work harder mm -hmm. than we did. And that was actually number two was more comfortable than being number <laughs> one in some respects. And uh, I think we're all aware, those of us who've been around a long time, as to how much better the product has become. But I think you've been around this long, you always think about how much better it can be. Sure. Well, I thank you for taking the time to uh, welcome to, to the, talk well, with Welcome to the family. Thank I mean, you. I think it's great.